Hello, welcome back to another episode of Zero Sixty. It's Monday morning, and I'm on my way down to see Shane from Hillside and drop off an ABS pump because he has an issue with an M54 he's doing some work on and he needs an ABS pump and I kind of wanted to go and see what they're doing in their workshop at the moment. But it also gave me a good excuse to go and catch up with Bryce to see if we can work out why we couldn't get his F30 keys to work. So I did actually do a community post yesterday. Um, yeah, basically just trying to get my head around coding keys for the F series or FEM fitted cars, ones that come after the CAS modules. Um, it's just a nightmare, and I'm pretty confident I've narrowed it down to crappy Chinese keys, but we will see. Um, for now, we're on the road. We're about 20 minutes away from Shane and Gresham, so we'll uh, give you an update once we arrive there, because they've normally got some cool stuff going on. Normally. Right. See you shortly. Well, I made it to Gresham and Hillside, and that's my DSC pump, Shane. That come from the 17 teacup. Will it make my car faster? It will. Well, it's actually Shane's doing some work on his brother's car, um, which is we're going to go and have a look at it in a minute because it looks pretty cool. It's got some sick wheels on it. But while we're in the workshop, I wanted to just show you guys some other stuff that Hillside does. Uh, E30 control trailing. E30 arms? rear trailing arms. Uh, these are just uh, random customers. Uh, Hang on, so they're not going in the S54 E30 up there? Not yet. They should. But not yet. Uh, awesome. These ones are just uh, all been reinforced, powder coated, converted to fire blood. Now, I have. This is really what your business sort of stemmed from. All this sort of that's high where it performance. That's really started because uh, at the time no one was doing it in Australia, and I needed some stuff for my own car. So that's really where it all started. Yeah, and I'm still doing it. And the other car that you got out there, your brother's car, it's getting one of your diff braces. Uh, it is now. With these diff braces, I made it off a... This this is the diff brace that I have on, well, I had on my car when I had the small case diff. And you got a whole batch made, didn't you? Got a whole batch made, and there was an issue. The subframe I did it off was not an N54 car. Uh, I don't know if you remember my install video, but I had to drill an extra hole. Uh, not the end of the world, because Shane designed these with three holes anyway, which lined up on the subframe he had here, but they don't line up on an N54 subframe, or, not the, because you fitted a couple, it looked, unless it was a weird, we don't know. Anyway. I don't know. He's got a sail on. So you've got six of these left. Four six of, them, of these left. Four of them are currently on cars. Yes. Scott's 19T car has one of these, by the way. It does. Yeah. Um, but to clear the ones that involve drilling the subframe, you've got a deal for people that are local. Yeah, so if you drill a couple of holes, either in the brace or the subframe, uh, and you can come and grab it, uh, 125 bucks. And you got yourself a diff brace. Well, that's pickup only. He's not going to post them out. You've got to be local. Um, hit me up a message if you can't make it. We'll sort something out. But can we go and have a look at that car? Let's do it. So this is it here. Man, did you work? Did you, what wheels are they? Ooh, now you got me. Style three, four, seven. Look at the Maybe concave. Sure they're, they're 10 inches all around. So there's a, there's a bit of a weird story with this car. This is Shane's brother's car. Shane's known it for a few years. This is the first M54 that Shane played with, and you just fitted turbos to it. Just did fresh OEM turbos. Uh, no matter what I tried, I could not convince him otherwise. Everybody, give him shit below in the comments. He put stock turbos back on, but it does look cool, and it's going to go well. It's going to have a diff brace. He's MHD stage two. Stage one. Stage one. He's such a sensible N54 owner. Oh, it does look cool. Actually, Matt was telling me, is this the car that's got the N52? This is. So, Gresham and Hillside together, they're pairing with basically something that they do a lot of is engine swaps, mainly E30s, but they're moving into the 36 chassis. And they're trying to get sort of good BMW motors that have got sort of performance characteristics that don't cost an arm and a leg. And so this one, can you pop, can you pop the bonnet? Hang on, does it even have a... I can pop the bonnet. So this is getting an N52 swap. So this is out of a E82 135, no 130? 130. So it's the three liter N52. And the way that Matt's got it worked out, well, I think they basically got it, they've got it mounted in there and you've helped do that. But Matt is doing all of the computer work so that it will run in this chassis with no errors. It's gonna be pretty cool. And it's gonna be a good They're budget really engine swap. Uh, they make good horsepower out of the box. Uh, the, the M54s, M52s are just so hard to get a good one these days. So I think this is the future for uh, easy swaps. Yeah, and future for like motorsport enthusiasts. So this car is gonna be a bit of a drift car, track car. It's gonna weigh next to nothing. And if you blows the motor up, they're under a thousand bucks. 
a good option. Matt's Yaris. I kind of like it. He's got to give it. He's going to let me have a drive in it one day. What's in the E36? It's a four-cylinder. It looks cool, though. It does look cool. And let's have another quick walk through the workshop before we head off. I hope the GoPro is picking this up all right, but we have an S54 out of a 46 M3 in the E30 coupe. Man, this thing's going to fly. They go really well. They're, they're a light car, and once we convert them to manual as well instead of SMG, uh, with a good diff ratio, they, they go good. So this, you've done quite a few of these conversions. It takes them about two weeks. Um, so if you've got an S54 that you want to put in your E30, let us know. And Shane was just saying, it's not completely straightforward. They've got to make a custom header, brake booster movements. There's a few things they've got to do to make them work, but man, it's it basically, it, it leaves here like it come with an S54 from the factory, which is pretty cool. It is very cool. I, I think it's probably almost the, the ultimate E30. They're just, they're such a good engine. So is this the ultimate E30 or will this be, can we tell the internet what's going in this one? I guess we can. Uh, this is Matt's car. This is getting a K24 turbo. Turbo. He's already got the engine. It's, it's a work in progress. He works on this when he's not working on customers' cars, but it's pretty well set up. It's got an E46 M3 suspension front end set up, running on Z32 300ZX brakes. I think these are a mismatched Frankenstein BC coilover, but man, it's going to be sick with a K24 and about 450 horsepower in an E30. I like it. There's just so much cool stuff here. I'm not going to show you this car. This is a customer's car that we've got to keep a little bit quiet. But again, it's going to be something pretty special. Dude, I could just come and hang out here a lot. In fact, I've been here for about an hour and a half, to be honest. All right, I better go and do some work. I've got to go and see Bryce, and we're going to see if we get those F30 keys working. <sighs> Matt's S54 powered, compact. Just cool stuff, cool stuff. All right, I've got to get going. Shane, enjoy the ABS pump. Thank you. I, I hope the, uh, the extra horsepower doesn't confuse your brother too much. <laughs> All right, and we've got King on guard as well. All right, let's get going. Well, I've made it over to Bryce's place. Um, Bryce actually lives in a high rise in the middle of Brisbane and we are in the underground car park and the lighting isn't the best, which is why I've got my phone light blaring at me right now. So basically what happened on the weekend, we tried to, well I tried to make keys for this car. Now we have managed to crack his FEM module, so I can actually write keys through OBD to his FEM pretty flawlessly, but the keys that I wrote, which we have here, they will start the car, but the buttons don't do anything. Um, oh, the car just went to sleep. Yeah, I got a bit freaked out then. Yeah, basically, and they'll only start the car if I hold it up to the emergency coil. In fact, I'll try and do it now. Let's see if we can position the GoPro in a in a precarious spot. So actually, I'll just show you here quickly. So if we push that, oh. okay, I can't test because I've got the original key here. But just trust me, it only works at the the emergency key. Now let's open up BIM tool. I might switch. Actually, can you guys see? No, I'll switch to the other phone so that we can actually record what's going on with BIM tool, and I'll show you the process we're going to try. Okay, so I've got BIM tool here. I was playing with some CAS modules last night. But let's just go FEM BDC learn. It's going to connect to BIM tool. And we will go get key info. There we go. So it's pulled up all of Bryce's information for this vehicle. And we can see here that we've currently got three keys enabled. I ended up deleting the other ones. Now, basically, what I think we've managed to do here, um, well, I'm not really sure. I've got a feeling that my aftermarket keys that I've got are just not working. But one thing I haven't tried, I haven't put any of the new keys into key slot one or two. Now there is a bit of a story with this car. So Bryce got it from the auction. Um, it was stolen and recovered with no actual damage. But what we did notice when we did the key, or when we, when we were modifying the FEM module, we noticed that somebody has fitted an aftermarket key to it recently. So the only key Bryce has is an aftermarket key. Um, however, they did that last key. Uh, it wasn't done with BIM tool. But you can see when we connect just down the bottom, it says reading data success, this unit not need programming, you can perform operation directly. So because we've already modified the EEPROM in this FEM module, we should be able to sort out the keys. So look, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, what's the word? I don't know. What I am gonna try and do, this key that we've got here, key number seven, actually what I need to do, I'm just gonna read it again. What I've ended up doing is virginizing one of the keys that I brought up, which is, this key here. Yeah, this is a fresh key. 
All right, we're getting somewhere. So it looks like the keys that come from China, um, when we tried on the weekend, could not get them to read or function in the car. So here I have Bryce's original key. Car reacts to it. And then, actually I'll do it on the floor. So original key with the silver bit, and now we have a working... Oh, I can't lock the car. I can open the boot. I gotta hold it down. So we've managed to get one key working. Now to get this key working, I had to rewrite the EEPROM with VVDI PROG. So it's like the key come from China with a faulty EEPROM. We think. Um, been lots of trial and error. Also, to get the car to actually accept the key, Bryce had to take his steering column apart and hold it closer to the emergency ring. For some reason, it wouldn't learn the key without taking the steering column apart. Just China goodness. China goodness. Um, but we are going to just try something else because we have a third key. You got the blue key? Yes. We have a blue key. So what we might just try if we can work it out is maybe virginize the blue one with VVDI prog and then see if we can get three keys working. Because I did read, some people say you can only have two keys. I reckon you can have more. Let's see what we can work out. Okay, so just so you guys know what's going on. Uh, but we have now virginized the blue key using VVDI prog and we'll go and see if we can code that to the car and get the blue key working. Well. We now have three keys programmed to this FEM module, and it finally worked. So here we go. We have Bryce's original key, unlocks the first key we got working today, and the third key. And all it was is you need to, well, I needed to reflash these keys with VVDI prog. The way they are supplied from China, they just don't work. So there we go. I've learned something today. Um, Whatever software they're putting on these keys is not compatible with an Australian F series, but the VVDI prog where the VVDI prog software is. Happy Bryce. Very happy. Look at all the keys you've managed to get. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I think I'm going to end this video off here. Uh, if you've got any questions about F series keys, let us know. It was awesome catching up with Shane and Matt from Gresham. They are doing some cool stuff. In fact, would anybody be interested in an M57 engine conversion video? Weird car, but they've they've planted the seed in my head. All right, I'm going to end off there, guys. A bit of a vlog today. We've got to get back up to the show. We've got to get working on that Vargas car. But just so you know what I have been up to do, um, been trying to get my head around F-Series key programming. It's a bit of a nightmare, especially when things don't do what they say they're going to do, which seems to be the way with Chinese stuff. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for the car, Bryce. No worries. Oh, also, guys, go and check out BM Retrofits. Bryce is just fearless when it comes to lending me his car to brick modules on. So thank you very much. No worries. Anytime. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.